Hey everyone, Brian here. I've just posted release 1.2 of my book, The Fundamentals of Control Theory. Supporters can download it through the link in the description, and if you're not a supporter, all it takes is a donation of any amount to become one, and you can get the book. Alright, enough of that. Let's talk about what's new in this release of the book. In the section on convolution, I added a side note. I had previously mentioned briefly the concept of discrete convolution. That is, performing convolution on a discrete signal rather than a continuous signal. Well, an observation that you might find interesting is that when you multiply two polynomials together, you're actually performing a discrete convolution of the polynomial coefficients. Remember how you were taught the FOIL method for multiplying two two-term polynomials? You multiply the first term, then the outer terms, then the inner terms, and finally the last terms, and you get the result. This is kind of neat, and easy to remember, but you'll find that it quickly breaks down when you try it with polynomials with more than two terms. So then you're taught that you can multiply two polynomials of any degree using a method very similar to multiplication of large scalars. But this is actually discrete convolution. Let's set f of t equal to the coefficients of the first polynomial. Here it's 1, 2, and 3 and g of t equal to the coefficients in the second, 3, 0, and 1. Then you can get the product of the two polynomials by convolving f and g. In fact, using the convolution function is the easiest way to multiply polynomials in MATLAB. You should try it out yourself, because if you're anything like me, you'll find it kind of interesting. In addition to that new side note, I also wrote sections 2.4 and 2.5. Section 2.4 covers an introduction to the frequency domain and declares the Fourier transform the tool to get us there. We typically have a good understanding of the time domain since we experience life through the passage of time, and so ideas like walking to a destination and calculating how much time it will take is familiar, and that familiarity is comforting. But the time domain isn't always the best way to represent information. Think of a mass sitting on a perfect spring. If you start that system in motion, the mass will bounce up and down and up and down forever. And if you tried to graph that motion in the time domain, you would quickly run out of paper. However, if you write the differential equation for that system and then solve for the solution, you would find that it's in the form of a pure cosine wave, which could be described by three parameters, the frequency of the wave, the amplitude of the wave, and the phase shift. And we could easily plot that information on two separate graphs. And once you start thinking of a signal in terms of the characteristics of the frequencies that make it up, then you're thinking about it in the frequency domain. From a purely plotting standpoint, you can see how a signal that is made up of three cosine waves looks rather chaotic in the time domain, but is quite neat in the frequency domain. But you may have guessed uh, correctly that this simplification in plotting doesn't hold up for all signals, specifically for signals that look nothing like cosine waves. For example, take this step function in the time domain. We can still represent it in the frequency domain by converting it into an infinite number of cosine waves, each at a different frequency and with a different amplitude. We do that conversion using the Fourier transform. Now, I don't go into detail about the Fourier transform in this section, but I'm working on an appendix that will give you a deeper understanding of the function. For now, we're just going to accept the Fourier transform as is, and use it to prove something remarkable, that the Fourier transform of the convolution integral is just multiplication of the individual transforms. Or a simpler way of putting it, convolution in the time domain is multiplication in the frequency domain. This is the last new section for this release, and it's heavy with mathematics. In this section, we prove the convolution theorem. That is, we prove that we can perform time domain convolution by multiplying in the frequency domain. I specifically spent a lot of time showing this proof because this is such a fundamental concept in transfer functions that I wanted you to spend several minutes thinking about it so that hopefully it sticks in your memory. Whenever you multiply two transfer functions together, you should think about the convolution theorem and know exactly what multiplication is doing for you. The proof starts out easy enough. You just replace f of t in the Fourier transform with the convolution integral. Now it looks complicated, but we can start to rearrange things and simplify it. First we reverse the order of the integration, so we integrate with respect to dt first, and then with respect to d tau. We can move f of tau out of the inner integral, 
since it's constant with respect to t. At this point, we can replace everything inside the square brackets with e to the minus i omega tau times the Fourier transform of g of t. Now to see why this is true, we need to learn about the Fourier transform shift theorem. The shift theorem is pretty awesome. If you take the Fourier transform of f of t, but first you shift f of t by a constant amount of time tau, you'll get an integral that already looks a lot like what we had in the brackets. But through some clever mathematical manipulation, we can simplify it. First, we multiply by e to the minus i omega tau and e to the i omega tau, which is just one, so multiplying by one doesn't change anything. But we can combine two of those three exponentials to give us e to the negative i omega times t minus tau inside the integral and pull out of the integral the remaining e to the minus i omega tau. You'll see that we're left with is just the Fourier transform integral times a constant e to the minus i omega tau. So what this is saying is that the Fourier transform of a time shifted function is just the Fourier transform of the unshifted function multiplied by a constant. And we can use the shift theorem in our proof to replace everything inside those square brackets, which is just the Fourier transform of a shifted function with e to the minus i omega tau times capital G of omega. Finally, what we're left with is just the Fourier transform of f of t, which is capital F of omega. So after all that math, we're left with the Fourier transform of f times the Fourier transform of g multiplied together. Now, I'm sure that was pretty difficult to follow along in this video, but I think it's spelled out pretty clearly in the book itself. Uh, if not, please be sure to write a ticket against the book if you feel something is missing or should be clarified. Not just with this section, but anywhere. I'm always looking for feedback. I want to be able to improve this book, and I need your help. So once more, if you've supported me in the past through Konos, then what are you waiting for? You can just click on the link in the description below and download the updated book right now for free. If you aren't a supporter and you'd like the book, then you can still go to that link and for any donation amount, either one time or monthly, you can download it and all future releases. If you want the book but really don't want to support me, then you can still get it from one of your friends for free. I'm releasing it under a Creative Commons license, so you're welcome to share the book with as many people as you like. My hope is that it spreads to all engineering students, and through everyone's collective comments and questions, I can create something that is truly helpful to learn the subject. Thanks for watching and for supporting, and be on the lookout for future updates.